It is with profound respect and humility that we welcome you to this closer gathering. We are indeed honored by your presence, your excellencies. Despite the short notice, your presence at this milestone occasion reinforces your belief in us and your expression of love for the younger generation. We thank you all. The PDP New Generation is a youth and women political organization established to promote, maintain, and preserve the integrity, unity, and ideology of the People's Democratic Party with a commitment to the growth of democracy in Nigeria. With a viral structure, strength, and network of youth and women across the country, the organization advances the role of this critical category of Nigerians. The PDP New Generation participates actively in decision-making process by promoting good governance and amplifying marginalized voices to influence leadership at all levels. We advocate for growth, overcome barriers for meaningful political participation, and promote a more vibrant, resilient, and inclusive democracy. As young people of the PDP stock, we work tirelessly to promote and defend the party through consistent media engagements. Ladies and gentlemen, PDP New Generation deployed an online registration platform that has recorded a database of over 100,000 young Nigerians who have signed in with us as members. We have a national spread of six, six zonal coordinators, 36 state coordinators, including the FCT, and coordinators in all the 774 local government areas of Nigeria, and world representatives in over 20 states. The first phase of Operation Rescue Nigeria was unveiled in the first quarter of 2022 as a pro-PDP campaign to converse and mobilize Nigerian youth into the party, including the drive for permanent voters card registration. At the end of the first phase of Operation Rescue Nigeria, our organization successfully inducted 7,000 young men and women into the PDP fold with their membership cards duly paid for and documented in their respective zones. We constituted a youth and women campaign council to support and contribute to the recent outings in EGT and Oshu State elections. We were physically present on the field, not as observers, but as campaign mobilizers for the gubernatorial candidates. On 11th June 2022, we inaugurated a 130 man youth and women campaign council for Oshu State gubernatorial election and launched Oshu for a DDK campaign. The campaign, the campaign council focused on door to door campaigns and initiated an aggressive media online mobilization. We participated in all the 30 local government campaign rallies, including the grand finale. On 7th July 2022, PDP New Generation constituted a national strategic committee of 25 selected youths from the six geopolitical zones of Nigeria, with a mandate to drive the second phase of official rescue Nigeria project. Today, the National Strategic Committee, chaired by Hawa Hatiku Ways, is here to present phase two of the project on preparations for future activities and projected achievements. The emphasis will be on youth as the most active and dominant group in the Nigerian policy. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the official campaign for the 2023 general elections will commence soon. PDP New Generation has a big task ahead. Our target is to deliver 5 million votes to the Atiku Ogoa ticket.
With a youth-oriented campaign, we are taking the message of hope to our generation. If they ask us why the PDP, we will tell them it is the only political party in Nigeria that represents true federalism. We will tell them it is the only political party that represents justice and fairness. Again, we will tell them it is the only political party in Nigeria that promotes youth and women inclusion. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we will tell them that the PDP is the only political party that can rescue and reunite Nigeria. <laughs> if they ask us why Atiku and Okowa tickets, we will tell them it is the only ticket that can bring wisdom to power, principles to politics, and superior knowledge to national development. We will tell them it is the only ticket that has a better plan for economy, security, and education of Nigeria. Again, we will tell them it is the only ticket that can manage and strengthen the diversity of this country. Ladies and gentlemen, we will tell them that the Atiku Okowa ticket is the only ticket that can rescue and bond the broken union of Nigeria. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if they ask us why Okowa, we will tell them he is the road master, empowerment master, sports master, and welfare master. And finally, if they ask us why Atiku? We will tell them he is the transitional, transactional, and transformational leader of our country. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we will tell them that His Excellency Al Haji Atiku Abubakar is the only presidential candidate with the superior experience to unify and lead the federal government. God bless the PDP new generation. God bless the People's Democratic Party. God bless the Federal Republic of It is an honor for me to be here today, and I am really excited to stand in this room full of a special crop of people, not just members of my political party, the People's Democratic Party, but a group of people that give me hope and reason to believe that there is yet still hope for us to experience a united Nigeria where everyone has a place at the table. A Nigeria where tribe or tongue does not divide us or define us, but a country where gender or religion is not a yardstick to measure how fat our share of the national cake should be. Because just as nobody has a monopoly of needs, so should the dividends of a blessed nation such as ours be not just enough to go around, but enough to share with our brothers and our sisters who are not as privileged as some of us are. When I received word that I would be speaking, or when I received word on the topic I'd be speaking on today, rescuing a divided Nigeria through unity and inclusive participation, I began to wonder how I would approach the topic. I came to a conclusion that my life as a young, married Nigerian woman in the political arena would be a good place to start. It's always best to tell the stories with a clear picture in mind for context. I do not plan to bore all of us with an academic exercise. As I'm well aware, we all have an idea of what Nigeria should be like today. In fact, with the current state of our economy and the level of insecurity we have to live with on a day-to-day -day basis, everyone here must have gotten the memo that a certificate of survival should be awarded to every Nigerian at this point. In light of this, I will summarize what my journey so far has been, and I will use that as a sounding board for the rest of this colloquy. What would I have to tell a fine young broadcaster who decides that it is time for her to become a more active citizen who should give back to society 
not just by voting for her choice of leaders, but actually deciding to offer herself up for service to her people. A young lady who believes that it is time to step away from the sidelines, move away from complaining that things are not working the way they should, or that things can be done better, and decides to throw her hat in the ring and run for office in her state. Not to digress, mind you, in Nigeria, once a woman is married, it's only a matter of time before she realizes that she has almost become stateless. This sad reality, this sad reality of an identity crisis, which will take a while to dawn on her, becomes glaring, especially if she has married into another state or tribe. The woman goes to her own state of origin, where her father comes from, only to be informed that there is no space for her kind because she has been married off. She becomes clueless in the face of this culture shock and even more perplexed on next best steps. Her new state by marriage also will probably embrace her warmly until she expresses her desire to seek more than being a good wife. Her in-laws will waste no time in reminding her that she is nothing but a wife. And once again, there is no space. How could she possibly imagine that coming from another state, she can take up a slot that is reserved for those who deserve it as their birthright? How could she suddenly imagine that marriage, a mere marriage, is a gate pass? We could go on and on describing the different forms this vicious cycle can take. You see, being married or single, young or old, woman or man, a person living with disability, or what religion you adhere to, are all factors that should bind us together, if for nothing, owing to the desire to get to know our neighbors better. Rather, these are factors that threaten to shred us at our very core not because they do or do not matter on their own, but because we are yet to understand the concept of patriotism in its real sense. We ideate on the ideals of being Nigerian and pay lip service to our unity. However, when push comes to shove, when the chips are down, do we put our love for country before us or does our love for self drive us not as a motivator here, but does it drive a wedge between the meaningful relationships that should blossom into the Nigeria we will all enjoy? I'd like us to ponder. So I'll go back to that question. What exactly do I tell this young lady? You remember the young lady I'm talking about, that fine young broadcaster who wants to give up herself for service politically. She has finally navigated the hurdle of statehood she is now faced with another burden. This one is the one I fondly named, you're too young, join the queue. <laughs> you see, we are all aware of the not too young to run. Beyond being a slogan, it's an actual law. But is it just an attempt at being politically correct? While in essence, it is only just political jingoism. <laughs> you know, I love to ask questions, as we all should, first of ourselves, before we begin to question the threads that hold the fabric of our society together. So back to this Nigerian lady, a 40-year-old responsible adult who has not come to push her elders out of the political arena, but rather to bring, bring on board her experience, her exposure, and expertise to lend a hand in nation building. Instead of receiving applause, she stared in the face yet again by the reality check that if we do not and have not paid our dues politically, you are an outsider. Before you ask me what it means to pay your dues, I will attempt to provide an answer. It simply means you have not been tested. And by tested here, I mean not by what value you have to offer,
But most times, the measuring spoon is how much of servitude you have entered into with a political godfather's pot. You see, this certainly is at the expense of whatever good she may be bringing to the table, all sacrificed on the altar of someone else's ego, on the platter of some of us have been here for so long. Who does she think she is? And oh yes, lest I forget, there is one other important question that we do not like to ask that makes us walk around on eggshells. That question is one which almost gives this fine, naive young lady a headache and sleepless nights. Where is the money? You see, naivety is not an excuse for ignorance. So in her quest to participate in nation building, she is stared point blank in the face by this question. She discovers that money and power in Nigerian politics are factors that would surely slam the door of service to country on the already marginalized, the youths, the women, and even the men who may not be able to readily rob a bank or have a godfather on whose back they can ride. Mind you, as this heart-rending reality dawns on her, her darling mentor quickly opines that it is not just money, power, and politics, but in fact, money is the power in politics. We all know what our economic indices are these days. They are all facing south, with the Naira at over 700 in the parallel market, spiraling towards 1,000 to the dollar, Please don't forget, the central bank says the import and exchange window is the only acceptable window. Before you say I talked about parallel market here, I'm not trying to mislead us. Yet some people have not even seen a $100 bill before. Some of them don't even earn that much. They are Nigerians who want to contribute to national development but cannot afford to. Now, can someone tell me where the money is? Well, 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 enough of these polarizing tales of woe. Albeit a daily reality, every young Nigerian has to live with. The picture I've just painted can be played in a thousand and one scenarios, and we can all insert our own scripts and cast. It all ends up in the same vicious cycle that leaves us wondering which way we have to go to rescue a divided Nigeria through unity and inclusive participation. Now to the meat of the matter. What does the word rescue mean? The dictionary defines rescue as an act to save from a dangerous situation. Points to note, there must be a situation that needs salvaging for there to be an attempt to rescue. On this one, I know we are all agreed on the same page. Nigeria, my Nigeria. We cannot continue this way. One on, in, we cannot continue this way. Like the words of our uh, nursery rhyme, and lately one of everyone's favorite song, there is fire on the mountain. Or, there is fire on the mountain. But unlike that popular nursery rhyme, we cannot run away. And in the context of that lovely song, we are not unbothered. Instead, we are here because we are in search of tangible ways to redeem the situation. You see, it is one thing to know the problem. It's another to understand what exactly the problem is and the root cause of this problem. Hopefully, when we walk out of this room today, we will be doing so with a bird's eye view of what direction we need to take towards a solution. And we will move promptly if there will be any chance, chance to steer the ship around. I'll submit to us today that the solution to a divided Nigeria starts with us, you and I. It starts with having a sense of ownership. This is just like a person who loves his business to the extent that he talks about it as if it were their child or the love of their life. The difference between accountability and ownership in a company is the difference between feeling responsible for your given task and a generalized sense of ownership regarding the company's success as a whole. This same thing plays out here. Hold them accountable. They should be accountable. Who are they? Who am I? Who are we? If we see clearly that there is a challenge, but are not in a hurry to sublet the problem and its solution to the person next door, we are well on our way to making good progress. This sense of ownership would be a defining factor in our relationship with others. Towards determining what happens in the bigger picture, 
If someone is not watching, what do I do? How I treat the next person will trickle down to how that person views not just me, but also himself, and in return, how he will treat the next person. How I manage the resources at my disposal today will reflect on what I hand over and how my successor treats same. How I re react or respond to power will define not just who I am, but also inform the actions of those in my stead. When we'll wonder, will Nigeria give back to those who believe in her, or will we continue with lost dreams and our country betrayal, country's betrayal of those who have reposed their trust in a nation that is ailing to give back? We should remember that Nigeria is an entity that can only give back as far as those who comprise Nigeria are willing to invest in the country and by default themselves. What exactly do I mean by having a sense of ownership? It is this sense of ownership that defines how we do not allow ethnicity divide us. It is a sense of ownership that shapes how we respond as humans because only a madman would set his house on fire and worse still, watch his house burn while he does nothing. This sense of ownership is what will make our family units tighter because as parents, we will be more deliberate about the little humans that we send to school and our larger society. We should be mindful to instill values that do not glorify misogyny, religious intolerance, or the share idea, as George Orwell's Animal Farm tells us, that all animals are born equal, but some are more equal than others. No project of social renewal and transformation is ever achieved without united involvement. The task before us is one of renewing the social contract, building trust between government and the citizens, because who is the government? We are the government. And I'd like to leave us with this important point, that we as a people must shun the divisive narratives. The nation's political, economic, and religious leaders must all join hands to bring Nigeria together, heal rifts between communities, and build bridges across divides, bearing in mind that nobility is far from mere entitlement. It requires people of noble status to fulfill social responsibilities. We must all resist the urge to depend or promote tribal and religious fault lines for legitimacy, noting that the external factors we cite as reasons for our problems cannot thrive without internal weaknesses. Charity, they say, begins at home. And for those calling for cessation as a way out, I submit to you that such would be a quick way to extinction, not development. Love, peace, and unity are inherent and not products of external stimuli. If we cannot work together, if we cannot work together after being intertwined in this marriage of over 60 years, albeit one of circumstance, who has deceived us that we even understand and are willing to embrace the principles of separation? I charge us to sit back and reflect on our value system first. Do we? take all of these, determination, the desire to see Nigeria grow into the well-formed and united nation we seek, and our endless pursuit to the task ahead, no matter what. Hard work. We must be ready to get down and do the hard work ourselves. It will not always be palatable. It is not a stroll in the park. We must be resolute in getting the job done, no matter what. Integrity. Let us begin to change the story from our immediate spaces. May our yes be yes and our no, no. May we see the good in ourselves and others and choose to follow th through. Nigeria can and will be great again. Truth, we must be sincere in our intentions and we must be true in our actions. The goal is rescuing a divided Nigeria through unity and inclusive participation. And it's never too early to start. That is why organizations like the PDP New Generation are leading the way in driving youth participation and inclusiveness. It is also never too late to try again. That's why a man like His Excellency Alaji Atikwa Bubaka, the unifier, believes that he has what it takes to lead us into a new Nigeria, had to try yet again in moving to lead Nigeria. He has not grown tired. He has not grown tired, and by God's special grace, this time around, we will get it right. God bless us all.
God bless the People's Democratic Party. God bless Nigeria. Thank you. Young people, we don't have any other president in Nigeria today. This is the only president and vice presidential vice president that we have, the only waiting to take to take office. Any other person in that office today has disappeared to Liberia or somewhere else. So we have only these leaders who are going to lead us. Let me also recognize my brother, the governor of Taraba State, and other dignitaries here, particularly my leader, as I call him, the national youth leader. Anytime he walks into my office, I have to stand up. Because, as you have heard from him, he's truly a leader. I will have so many youth who are leaders. My comments will be very brief. Children also need their parents. Whatever you are as a young person, you need the guidance of your parents. And there are two types of parents. There are those who eat everything, live a reckless life, and only live alone for their children. Those of my generation will remember an American musical group called The Temptations. And the Temptations sang a song, Papa was a rolling stone. And the young man in this song Say, ask his mother that what did my father leave behind? And the mother replied, when he died, he only lived, he only left alone. In other words, the children have to pay that loan. Today we have seen that type of parent in Nigeria who rather than leave something tangible for you, the younger generation, is only leaving loans for you to come and pay. And in fact, even as I speak today, we cannot pay those loans. The second type of parent is that which wants to create wealth to create a conducive environment for his children to build on. And again, in the recent political history of our country, we have seen such a parent. And that parent was the PDP administration between 1998 and 2015 particularly under the leadership of President Olusegun Obasanjo, and where the economy was ably guided by the All Father sitting here, Atiku Abubakar. He made it possible for Nigeria to pay all its debts We paid off all the Paris Club debts, and then whatever was left was written off. So over $30 billion went away, and we were virtually debt-free. In other words, whatever revenue came in after that, we are going to build a future for you, the younger generation. This is what Atif Abubakar did when he was the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. My friend and brother is too old, we should hand over to the youth. 
but the youth need a father to guide them. And I believe this particular father will take over next year and guide you to prosperity. So many things were said here, but one was missing. That is, if you have your child, train the child. The daughter came here and spoke, and somebody commented, I wish I had a daughter like that. It's because my brother and friend, Atiko Rubaka, lays a lot of emphasis on education. He trains his children very well. There was a time we visited Yola. He took me into his nursery school, primary school, secondary school, and we went to the university, which he had just started building at that time. That university is today one of the best in Africa. And I understand it has produced over 15,000 young people with necessary skills to face the future. A good father will lay emphasis on education. As vice president, he and I sat together and involved a policy for the northern part of the country to drive forward education. We met regularly in Kaduna under his chairmanship. And we were trying to make sure that there was more, there was, great, there was greater improvement in education in the north, northern part of the country. It is that lack of education and adequate ski preparation that has generated the insecurity you see here today. I believe when he comes back, he will revisit that program of massive education for the country. He will not sit down and see children stay at home for six months and more when ASU is on strike. Nigeria is rich enough to invest in its education. It's rich enough to give enough money to the universities. Any parent who sits down and simply watches what is happening. The children are staying at home as we are on strike for six months, nothing is done. I don't think that is a responsible parent. I believe Atiko Bubaka will be a different type of parent to you. And therefore, it is not just enough to hand over to the youth. We have seen young people who have served as governors of their states who rather than grow the states have been disasters to those states. I believe what you need is a parent of this capacity who will help to guide the youth. And the youth that we need to be leaders of tomorrow, it's not every youth that is a leader of tomorrow. Again, you classify youth into two. There are those irresponsible youths who are taking tramor who are taking Indian hemp, who are carrying out kidnapping, who are carrying out all sorts of vices that are detrimental to the interests of this country. And there are those youth who are trained for the future. There are those youth who are trained and responsible and know that they have to learn from their parents. I believe this particular organization is made up of such youths who tomorrow, when we step down, from the podium, we take over the mantle of leadership. I thank you, and I congratulate you for this giant effort. Do not relent in the rescue effort, because it is very, I'm very certain that come May next year, you will have a brand new team led by President Atiku Abubaka. Thank you, and God bless you. Your Excellency, the National Chairman of a great party, Senator Dr. Yo Chayu, Your Excellency, the Governor of Taraba State, former Governor of Cross River State, distinguished members of the National Assembly, my youth leader, I still remain a youth, so it's my youth leader. <laughs> I'm truly so proud of you. And I want to thank 
our Deputy Ubantura candidate who spoke to us earlier. A very wonderful speech, thought provoking. And you can only find that in the PDP. The PDP new generation and its leadership, I truly want to thank all of you. You have made us proud. Listening to our youths today, I feel very encouraged. Very, very encouraged. And listening to a national youth leader who is just about, just 25, I feel very encouraged. You can't find such in other parties. Thank you. Thank you for what you did today. The real truth is having listened to our youths, I'm beginning to see that we have no more cause to worry because there is a future for all of us. There are people who are set and ready to take over the mantle of leadership. We are in a nation today that is very deeply troubled. Our conversations are diverse with angry tones. Our youths and our women are deeply traumatized. The things that hold us together appears to give way, and the very foundation of our collective existence is threatened. We are gathered here today in search of a solution, and most probably to be a part of the pathway in rediscovering the Nigeria of our dream. I welcome you to this journey of rebirth. As youths, you have a critical role to play. We are all stakeholders. In troubled times, such as we experience today, we need the guidance of those who have been tested, men with a nationalistic personnel, who will be inclusive, have respect for our diversity, and see the need to unite us for the greater strength of our nation. He who will provide leadership to unite and not to divide, to secure and not to destroy us, and to prosper our people yet again. We search for a leader who will, from day one, begin the process of rebuilding the foundation of our fractured economy, create jobs and wealth for our youths, build back confidence in the private sector, re-engineer our agriculture, and support our micro, small, and medium enterprises. We need someone who will support and reform our educational system for greater productivity. We seek for that leader who will partner with the states, devolving powers and resources to sub-national governments for greater impact in nation building and development. He who will help our youths to find their pathway. That is the leader that we seek for. I have found one among the lot who is determined to provide this needed leadership. He is Atiku Abubakar. He stands tall among them all, ready to refocus our trust and guide our nation once again on the pathway of prosperity. Leadership is not butter and bread. Some think it is so, but it is not. In the times we are, 
the nation cannot afford men who learn on the job. We need men who will command respect nationally and yet be humble enough to build a team and respect their views. I congratulate the PDP New Generation and its National Strategic Committee on the official launch of Operation Rescue Nigerian projects. We are all, we all in AA's team, as is from the call, believe in one nation, a nation Nigeria, and we believe in Article for All. Together, and truly together, as youth, as youth under AA's guidance, we can fix a nation and rebuild the Nigeria of our dream. Let us rise up and build yet again. I congratulate you all. God bless you. Governor Kowam, Chairman Ayu, Your Excellency, Governor Darius, Imoke, Boni Haruna, Senators of the Federal Republic of Nigeria seated here, Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor, designate of Cross River, <clears throat> our National Youth Leader of PDP, young men and women, and distinguished ladies of the PDP new generation. You see, any time I come to this center, I always have a feeling of nostalgia, a feeling of what this center stands for. In the era of the military rulership in this country, around mid-80s, the late Shehu Yaradwa invited many of us, maybe about 1920, 25. There were 19 states. He picked a young man from every state of the country. Of course, I was one of those young men. And said to us, I want you to come along with me to fight the military and restore democracy in this country. The journey may be long, it may be rough. Some of us may live to see the return of democracy, some of us may not live to see. And he was one of those who never lived to see the return of democracy and he made a supreme sacrifice of his life. Those of us who believed in the struggle continued. Here we are today with over 20 years of continued democracy. So anytime I step into this center, which I single-handedly borrowed from the United States, from the Martin Luther King Center, and said, what would I do to remember this man who made supreme sacrifice and who also made our lives possible? And with friends, we came together to build this center. So anytime I walk into this center, 
One of the major political philosophies he told us was that we should break away at that time from our regional and build bridges across this country between north and south, east and west, so that we can have a united Nigeria. And that was why when we were building this center, we also built an incomplete bridge outside. Those of you who don't know the meaning of that uncompleted bridge. This is because he started building the bridge of unity across this country and he didn't complete it. Those of us who live long enough continued with that. And I hope the young generation of PDP will continue building those bridges until we achieve unity in our country. I listened to the speech of the Deputy Governor designate from Cross River. And one of the issues she raised in that speech was the issue of women and their state of origin if they marry across their states. Well, only one of my wives is from my state. <laughs> but I remember during one of the transitions of President Babangida, because Babangida had many transitions. He will promulgate a decree or one transition. When we go midway, he will revoke the decree and collapse the entire transition. But there is one very, very important provision in one of the transition decrees. And that was the issue of citizenship. And in that decree, he made it eligible for any Nigerian if you have lived in a place for a minimum of three years and you pay the tax, you are eligible to contest in that state. A noble provision. Who would have brought about integration and unity in this country? But of course, it's typical of Bangida, when we went halfway, he disbanded. And those of us, I don't know how many of us were here, uh, participated in the 1994-95 Constitutional Conference. When we brought the issue, we said, okay, let us put it in our constitution. Oh my God. There was horrible uproar. Total rejection that people didn't want. And of course, it was a constitutional conference. Uh, elected delegates. Some of us believed in that provision, but unfortunately we were in the minority and the provision was rejected. Madam Deputy Governor, I hope we will have the opportunity to review our constitution again, which I believe I will lead that if I become president. I hope some of these powers and resources we are talking, we are going to devolve to the states. We will make it possible for people who live outside their states, not necessarily who marry outside their states, but people and all Nigerians. I mean, we all live outside our various states of origin or of birth. And that is actually one of the provisions that is available in the United States Constitution. You don't have to. I think they are only maybe six months, one year, and then you become a citizen of that state. You can run for elections, do two years. So 
I thought uh, members of the new generation of PDP, this is an issue you can put, I mean, put on the front banner as you continue with your political awareness and then campaigns. Because we will definitely come to a situation where we will review our constitution. Let me congratulate you for putting together this new generation body of our party. But what I want you to understand is that politics is a career. In fact, I started mine before I even left the university. So in the university, I was a student politician. I contested all the elections. One year, yeah, one year, two years, and that's why I think I came out with a lower grade. Because, uh, <laughs> because every time I was running for an elective office in the Students' Union, uh, you know, I started from uh, I contested for secretary, I lost to somebody, then contested for assistant secretary, I won, and then from there I won, you know, until I left. And therefore continued after I left the civil service. It is a career. Don't get disappointed. Don't get frustrated because you, uh, you lose an election one time or second time, or even third time. On the presidency, this is my third time on the ballot, and on other occasions I never even reached the ballot. So it is a career. It requires perseverance, it requires patience, and I thought I should let you know this, if you want to make a career out of it. If not, then if you try once and you feel you can't handle it, move on to another aspect <coughs> of your life. Again, there is no monopoly of good governance, whether you are young or old. There is no monopoly. You cannot say only young leaders can be good leaders. We have seen young leaders who have failed in leadership. You can't say, like the chairman has said, only old people can be good leaders because we have seen elderly people who have failed woefully. We are going through one. <laughs> So, <clears throat> I believe, I think it is a matter of training. If you are very well trained, like the chairman said, yes, I admit, I have trained all my children. I have trained them, and I have a pattern of behavior which I insist from each and every one of them, or you face discipline. So it all depends on the kind of training you give to your children. And I have, yes, I'm an only child of my parents. Today I have more than 20 of my children. And I make sure they are all very well trained. Nobody is allowed to misbehave. Of course, if you misbehave, you are dealt with. So, it is the training that you receive that determines the leadership that 
you can give to others and to the society. So it is not good leadership is not the monopoly of the old and is not the monopoly of the young. We must bear this in mind. So let me not take too much of your time. I'm a politician. Maybe I may be talking and talking to So I want to congratulate you, new generation, for this wonderful initiative. And I hope that you will be very, very determined in achieving the objectives of this year, new generation. As you know, our current, current uh, electoral process is being devolved to the polling unit. We don't want you in Abuja. We don't want you even in your state. We want you in your polling unit, polling booth. Go and deliver it to us. Protect the votes there and deliver it to us there. So, as far as PDP is concerned, we are going to unveil a campaign structure that is more emphasis on the polling unit. We are not going to have an unwieldy campaign council and we are not going to be engaged in the jamboree campaign that they used to do. We are going to put emphasis at the polling unit. I want you to take note of that. Don't hang around in Abuja establishing and creating so many support groups running between my campaign office and my house and PDP headquarters and think you are doing any good thing to the party or even to yourself. Go back to your unit. Deliver it. So, new generation, congratulations on a wonderful job and I wish you every success. If you need consultancy, the party chairman is here. Uh, he will give you all the consultancy you need. Thank you very much. I see phone lights. Your phones who want this to go on social media. Engineer GD and Thank you for coming, Ambassador Adiyu Pinabas, thank you for coming, Dr. Lei Moki, former Governor of Prosperity, thank you for coming. Put your hands together ladies and gentlemen, one more time. When I say I think we unify, I think we unify, we unify, I think we unify, we unify, we unify, Thank you very much for coming out some pictures. Louder, let me hear you.